Welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about petrophysics and well logs or uh, wireline logs. Um, so some of you already have an idea about uh, what are we going to talk about today. Uh, while others may have come across this video just because of you know learn something new. So petrophysics is uh, pretty much the science behind uh, producing, uh, analyzing and using well logs. Uh, so basically petrophysics is an area of science uh, that uh, associated with uh, well logs itself. So uh, let's uh, dive into it. So what is petrophysics? Before we talk about well logs, we need to understand some basic science and methodology behind uh, well logs or well line logs. Uh, well logs are used in petrophysics and petrophysics is a specialized area of expertise uh, that involves studying physical and chemical properties of rocks and uh, these properties are directly influenced by the distribution of pores uh, and fluids within them. Uh, you can pretty much look at petrophysics as a branch of geology and the term petra uh, means uh, rocks and um, physics mean nature so petrophysics you know studying rocks it is widely used um, in uh, reservoir engineering uh, hydrocarbon uh, viability studies uh, in other words uh, evaluating economic value of petroleum resources uh, and generally associated with petroleum industry um, they are vital for successful uh, operation of petroleum uh, wells. Uh, they can be used uh, to either evaluate the reservoir but also uh, can be used for uh, controlling uh, safety parameters uh, when not only when drilling for oil and gas but also during exploration process. They are used by engineers, geologists, technicians, um, accountants, uh, you know, it's used by they can be used by wide variety of uh, other um, sub industries so what are petrophysical properties uh, there are two uh, types of parameters um, primary and secondary the primary parameters includes uh, physical conditions such as temperature and pressure uh, borehole uh, spatial data such as uh, diameter, depth, um, type of um, um, materials that the borehole uh, surface is made out of, uh, pretty much different lithologies, and chemical and physical properties of the drilling mud. Uh, secondary parameters include uh, radioactivity, uh, resistivity, neutron density, magnetic resonance, um, and they are usually measured parameters. So uh, what do we do? Uh, petrophysicists or technically, uh, I mean, they are geologists. Uh, all petrophysicists are typically geologists. Sometimes you see engineers as well. Um, what petrophysicists do is uh, they use wireline uh, well logs uh, or, you know, well logs to analyze data. And... Uh, these logs are often complemented by physical samples. Uh, you can correlate uh, log data uh, to increase the accuracy of information. Uh, so that's one thing. And another thing is we also use seismic data interpretation and analysis. These are derived from um, uh, seismic information and they are used for um, evaluating geological formations and in addition to that they can be used for modeling geological or engineering parameters and uh, as you can see um, an example of a well log uh, for you can see right here so this is a typical well log this is what you typically get uh, when you look at a well log um, this one has like two tracks and multiple logs um, so the primary goal of all of this analysis is to understand the physical and chemical properties 
of the lithology that you are working with and it is a multidisciplinary approach so analytical parameters uh, includes uh, porosity permeability water saturation uh, petrochemical saturation stability of formations uh, transmissivity so there are a lot of other information as well uh, there are two types of logs um, like two two areas of how we the two methods of producing logs uh, one called wireline the other one called uh, LWDs so the differences would be the wireline logs uh, logs are recorded after the drilling tools are taken out of the borehole uh, usually involve specialized tools that cannot be attached uh, to the same string as the drilling one the borehole must be stabilized before the logging information uh, has been uh, collected to prevent uh, borehole collapse during logging uh, the other types of logs are known as LWDs uh, as the name suggests the logging while drilling and the data is collected during the drilling process itself uh, this type of logs were available in North America for the last 30 years logging sensors are located right behind the drilling equipment uh, so if you have the well and uh, you have your drilling tools so that's the drilling head so and if this is the drilling string logging tools has pretty much located around this area so that would be the area and it's uh, basically LWD to sensors are part of the bottom hole assembly and the major major advantages would be the data is collected as the well is being drilled uh, so in a, even if, in other words the data is pretty much collected in real time um, there are a lot of advantages of this uh, for example even if the borehole collapse you would still have the data uh, that you uh, collected during the drilling process uh, as opposed to in wireline logs uh, during drilling if the borehole collapse you don't have any kind of data um, any kind of logging data uh, as at least uh, as far as the wireline logs itself concerned uh, to analyze the formation itself so other advantage of LWD is it increased the precision and geosteering uh, use for drilling parameter controls such as mud weight speed etc um, the formation measurements are more accurate and the LW tools uh, saves rig time use significantly because you only had to uh, drill once like you don't have to drill once and then put a second string to collect the data the true image of the borehole can be constructed using gamma ray um, resistivity and density tools uh, what that means is basically just because of the tools are sitting right behind the um, drilling tool itself it can uh, take a pretty good image of the borehole um, and in an event of an incident such as a borehole collapse the LW data as I mentioned before can still be used for uh, formation evaluations uh, the disadvantages would be a breakdown of uh, LWT tools will result in long delays of the well completion in other words if because we have two sets of tools one is the drilling tools and the other one is the uh, the LWD tools if one of those tools fails typically you have to pull this the entire string out and then fix the problem and put it back in, in again so it takes if, if there is a if there is if there were to have a failure it could result in a long delay in um, operations the LW2 the tools have um, has to withstand a much harsher environment than the wireline uh, tools uh, if the diameter of the borehole changes the LWD tools have to be reset to fit the new borehole size before the LWD data uh, uh, collection continues. Uh, in other words, um, if the size of the borehole changes, the the tools need to be resized. However, with the um, significant improvement in technologies and uh, you know uh, you know 
uh, how we use um, in these tools this probably gonna get el eliminated uh, in the near future uh, this type of particular problem uh, depth controls on LWDs are not very accurate as opposed to just wireline logs however uh, with the use of uh, multiple resources such as um, drill cuttings and core samples and other data uh, you can actually pretty much correlate uh, whatever the information you have with the uh, well logs itself so the term log run is used in uh, wireline logs uh, rather than in uh, LWD logs each time the wireline log tools are used it will call a log run remember you had to drill first and then you had to use a different string you had to take all the drilling tools out and you had to put a new string with the logging tools uh, to collect the data that's why we use the term use the term uh, log run um, in uh, <coughs> uh, in wireline logs uh, in terms of measurements, uh, we use uh, API, uh, American Petroleum Institute uh, standard for things like gamma ray. Um, and um, we also use uh, linear or logarithmic or hybrid ones uh, such as this one, uh, which is measuring uh, densities. And we can use multiple logs uh, on a single track. For example, this is called a track and this is a second track so I had two tracks this whole thing is a track and this is a this whole thing is another track and this track have like three different logs here's a one and here's another one and this is another one in red so you can have multiple tracks sorry multiple logs in a single track and you can have multiple tracks next to each other like this one and this one to co uh, with correlation uh, with the depth to analyze your information. This is actually help us uh, interpret data more accurately um, and uh, but with using other sources such as uh, core samples we can get a pretty good idea about what's underneath the surface. And uh, in this particular log, uh, you can see the uh, gamma rays going from uh, 0 to 150 API. And this red line shows the gamma rays responding to the lithology. And, uh, you know, in this particular situation that, uh, you know, one of the geologists decided they're going to, you know, have a limit right here. That's why it's colored this side. Uh, we, I will explain what they are uh, in a later, um, uh, uh, one of our later uh, discussions. So this is what a typical well log pretty much look like. There are different types of logs. Uh, there are lithology logs, uh, porosity logs, resistivity logs, velocity logs, caliper logs, and uh, pressure sensors, uh, which are not very uh, common but can be used for um, safety controls uh, you can keep an eye on you know the pressure differences in uh, the reservoir as well as the drilling area uh, most common um, and very use most useful I would say instead of common most useful um, log would be the lithology log and the porosity and uh, resistivity logs so these three logs are very uh, very useful logs uh, in the petroleum industry and that's everything flocks and uh, have a nice day and wish you all the best until next time keep dreaming science <laughs>